بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد قال تعالى في وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم Your Lord said call upon me I will answer you and I mentioned the dua is the most virtuous type of service and ibadah and worship Dua is when you speak to God. Some people say, why should we ask him if he knows everything about us? He says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مَنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ We are closer to you than your jugular vein. We are closer to you. If he's close to us, he knows the in and out. He knows everything about us. He knows about our thoughts, our aspirations, our dreams, our sufferings. Why should we say, oh God, why should we speak it? Yes, God knows. But God also wants you to know. You are telling yourself when you ask, oh God, you are not telling him, you are telling yourself. You are affirming, affirming your need and your slavery to God and your dependency on God. So this is a statement that you make not to God when you ask him, to yourself. That's all Mustafa. You need God. You are dependent on him. You cannot survive without him. You need him. He doesn't need you. The me this is the meaning of dua. The meaning of dua is not to alert God and tell him, hey God, you are not paying attention to me, so please listen. He's listening. He's watching you. He knows even if you don't speak, he knows exactly what goes in your heart and your mind. But this is for you. This is a type of training for you. Terbiya. Terbiya. Dua is the best type of terbiya and nurturance. Because the dua keeps you close to God and keeps you aware, you, that you need God all the time. And once you depend on God, that is the best type of nurturance and growth and development. Spiritual and mental development. When you know that you need God, you cannot survive without Him. The moment we believe that we are self-sufficient, Rani, the moment we think, we think that we don't need God today, that is the moment of damnation and failure in our life. So we need to develop and maintain this feeling that we always need God. This is why we talk to Him. This is why we ask Him. Yesterday, I mentioned few conditions of how to reach out to God and how to speak to Him, the manners, adab dua And today I'm going to continue with another four or five points. One of the ways that we have to speak to God is we have to speak with Him humbly Humbly. Ud'u rabbakum tadarru'an. Tadarru'an means in a humble way. With a humiliation. Humility before him. Tadarru'an wa khufya. And in secret. Secretly. Humbly and secretly. Because you have to humble yourself. When you need God, definitely you have to humble yourself. God says about the prophets, the anbiya, innahum kanu yusari'una. Fil khayrat, they were number one in goodness. Whenever there is goodness and kindness and help and service, they are there, number one. Yusari'una fil khayrat. They rush to help others. And also, wayad'unana, they call upon us, rahaban with desire, they know that God is going to give them. See, sometimes you call someone asking him for something, but you know he's going not, not going to respond to you. And sometimes you call someone and you know that he's going to say, yes, of course. Of course I'm going to be with you. Of course I'm going to help you. Of course I'm going to come for your aid. This is the way you have to speak to God. 
If you think that you are calling God and God is busy with someone else, with another creatures, another ibad, this is not the type of dua. You must, when you pray, you must pray with desire. يَدْعُونَنَا رَحْبًا وَرَحَبًا also, with fear, with reverence, with respect. وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَشَعِينَ اُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ تَضَرُّعًا Always call upon your God with a humility. Don't be arrogant. A person who is arrogant, his prayers are not accepted because he's sick. His soul is sick. So he has to fix his soul first before speaking to God. God does not accept the speech of someone who is arrogant. But someone who is humble, humbles himself. Tadarra in Arabic means to humble yourself. Humble yourself before God. Tell him, God, please, you know how much I love you? And I've done so many sins in my life. I know. I didn't listen to you for a long time. I went in the wrong direction for a long time. But now I'm sincere. Now I mean it. I come back to you. So please take me under your wings. When you speak to him like that, definitely is going to receive you. And definitely is going to listen to you. Beside, beside, Allah says, the Prophet says, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا ابتلاه. When God falls in love with someone, He tests that person. Those that God is not happy about them because they did something gross, He's not going to test them. Why? Because they're already being tested and they failed. You know, if a person at the school, he fails twice, three times, five, 50 times, the teacher is not going to keep testing him. He will send him home. Tells him, go to your mommy, go. Okay? But someone who's a smart is going to be tested by the teacher. Always. Always. God only tests those who he loves regularly, every day. To see whether they are still with him or not. Are they still maintaining their relationship with God or not? So the Prophet says if God loves someone, he's going to ibtalah, to test him or her. What is the test? The test, you lose something financial. Your car breaks down. They lay you off your, your job. Okay. God forbid some type of sickness or ailment, okay? These types of ibtila, okay? Then, why God tests him? Hatta yasma'a tawarru'ah. So he, that person would pray to God, do tawarru' with the humility, and God would enjoy his voice. Yes, God does enjoy your voice. Some voices God does enjoy. So he wants you to pray to him. Because if, if God gives everything, he's providing everything, we would never say to him, Ya Allah, let me ask you this, be honest with me. If, you, if your life is, is peaceful, is good, you have everything, would you say, still say, Oh Allah, please, please? You would never say that. Because you have everything. When you turn to him, the day you miss something in your life, the day you miss, at that time you tell him, please, please, please. But when you have everything, then you say, why, why should I pray? Only when we need him, we pray. So God says, if, you, if I don't test you, you are not going to come to me. I'd love to listen to your voice. So I'm going to test you. The second condition for the acceptance of our dua, the prayers, الْيَقِينَ بِالْإِجَابَةِ you, you have to be certain, certainty, having certainty that God is going to listen to you. And do not say to God, God, if you wish, do this to me. If you don't wish, it's okay. I can find someone to help me, you know. I have someone. I know the mayor. I know the doctor. I know the lawyer. Don't say this to God. Say to God, God, nobody can help me. I know the mayor. I know the president. But they are weak like me. They are empty-handed like me. Nobody can help me other than you. I have all the community standing with me, but they cannot help me. The only one who can help me is you. This is the way we talk to him. 
We tell him we are dependent on you 100%, not 99%, 100%. I am dependent on you, so don't abandon me. I don't care. I have family, I have friends, I have community, I have money, I have wealth, I have people, influential people, but you are something else. You are different. You are the other. You are the able. You are the one who can perform miracles. Those people can, can abandon me any day, any minute. I can turn and I find no one, no one next to me, only you. So when you pray to him, pray in, in a manner that you are completely cut off from everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then pray with the spirit of optimism. Some people pray and they say to God, Oh God, I'm praying, but I know you're not listening to me. I know, I know. Yeah. You, you didn't listen yesterday, last week, last month. I know today also you're not going to listen. This is not good. You have to be positive, not negative. You have to be optimistic, not pessimistic. If you want to be pessimistic, don't pray. Don't waste your time. Yes, if you are pessimistic, if this is the way you talk to God, He's not going to listen. Talk to him and tell him yes. Even when you, I did not get the answer yesterday, probably there is a reason. But I have faith in you. I have faith. Imam al-Sadiq says when you pray to God, pray with this spirit, this spirit of optimism, that the ijabah, the answer is al al bab waiting for you at the door. It can, it can get into your house any second, the answer. With this spirit of optimism. Be positive when you pray to God. And when you are positive, God will listen. God does not love those who are negative. God does not love those who are always complaining about anything. He only loves those who speak always with a spirit of positivism. Positive always. They say, yes, it happens. They have hope. If you get despondent and, and, and life is dark in your eyes, you are not go going to get to anywhere. Anywhere, be always positive, always hopeful in what God has reserved for you. Okay, so this is the second, Al Yaqeenu Bil Ijaba. And the third tonight, Iftitahu al Dua Bi Dikrillah wa Salati ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. It's okay to speak to God any minute, any time, to say anything to Him. But if you want to expedite your case, have you seen when you go to the passport's office and you want to expedite your passport, how much you have to pay? Nobody knows? Only me, the poor guy? Huh? $60. Extra $60 you have to pay to expedite. 10 working days, okay? Now, if you want to speak to God and expedite your case, then you have to pay some more. What do you pay? This is what you pay. Dhikrullah, number one, and the salat for the Prophet and his family. Dhikrullah, see what we did in Dua al a few minutes ago. Allahumma inni aftatiqu thana'a bihamdik, hamdullah, praising him. وَأَنْتَ مُسَدِّدٌ لِلصَّوَابِ بِمَنِّكْ وَأَيْقَنْتُ أَنَّكَ أَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فِي مَوْضِعِ الْعَفْوِ الرَّحِمِ So you have to sanctify him. You have to praise God in the beginning. And Imam al-Sadiq says, each dua, every dua, is going, to be, is going to be put on hold. It's not going to reach there unless you begin your dua with حَتَّى يُصَلَّى عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ Beautiful. The dua is going to be intercepted. It cannot reach unless you send it with extra power. It requires extra energy and power to push it up. And that is extra power is as salatu ala Muhammadin wa ali The other requirement for answering our dua is Raddul Madalim. Raddul Madalim, it means we live 
in a society. We have relationship. Sometimes we wrong people knowingly or unknowingly. Sometimes we hurt people knowingly or unknowingly. Sometimes we violate their lives physically, materially, and sometimes morally and spiritually. How is that? Sometimes I take something from someone. I take it from him. His money, his property, his house, his car, his you know, computer, his, his... I take it from him. As long as I am taking something that does not belong to me, even if it is one dollar, even if it is one penny, the dua is not going to be answered. That's it. God says, go and settle your account with Fulan. You took his money, you took his car, you took his belonging. I'm not going to answer. Go, raddil mawal. Settle your account with him. Sometimes it's a penny, sometimes it's a million dollars. God is not going to answer. This is the material, physical. Sometimes it's not material. You have not taken money from someone. But you hurt someone with your tongue. You accuse someone of doing something that he didn't do. Accusation. False statement. Lies. Backbiting. Slandering. Or sometimes in public, you insult someone in public. And he gets hurt. In public you did this. Thing. You shouldn't do that. This is also as a price. Allah says, go and make that person happy again. Go and tell him I'm sorry. Go and tell him I'm sorry. I'm not going to listen to you. You did a violation. Don't come and ask me. Don't waste your time. Go and settle your account with that person. Go to him. Have the bravery, the courage, the guts of going to him and tell him I'm sorry. I insulted you. I hurt your feeling. Then come back to me. I would listen to you. And this is why in the dua, Look at Ahlul Bayt, how they teach us how to speak to God. They teach us that فَأَيَّمَا عَبْدٍ This is on Mondays. This is the dua. Every, each day has a beautiful dua. So please go and read them, especially in the month of Ramadan. After Salat al dhuhr take some five minutes, only five minutes. And do these prayers. So you, you ask God, فَأَيَّمَا عَبْدٍ Another, any, any servant of you, من عبيدك أو أمة من إمائك كانت له قبلي مظلمة ظلمتها إياه. I abuse that person. Okay, whether it's male, female, في نفسه أو في عرضه. Either I hurt him himself or I hurt his عرض. عرض means his family, his daughter, his wife, his sister. أو ماله or his property أو أهله, his family وولده. أو غيبة اختبته بها. I backbited that person. I spoke behind him, behind his back. He was not there. So when they mentioned him, I put him down. I put him down. This is غيبة. أو غيبة اختبته بها. أو تحامل عليه بميل أو هوى أو أنفة أو حمية أو رياء أو عصبية غائبا كان أو شاهدا حيا كان أو ميتا. فقصرت سيدي وضاق وسعي عن ردها إليه والتحلل من now I cannot reach to that person I hurt him but I don't know his address now I know I did something wrong to someone and I can't reach out to that person he moved from this city he went somewhere else I'm trying to find that person because I know I hurt his feelings I know I did injustice to him I know I slandered him now I can't find a way to get to him. So God, you, I leave this file with you. You take it over and you make that person happy on my behalf. Settle my account with that person. وَأَن تُرْضِيهِ عَنِّي بِمَا شِئْتْ وَأَن تُرْضِيهِ Make that person who is unhappy with me, you make him happy about me. Please, God. And God will do that. Yes. God is the best attorney. Sometimes we assign this file to this attorney, to this judge, to this friend. They throw it in the trash. They don't care about it. But God does not do that. If you assign him this task, 
God will make that person happy. So before you pray, remember those that you abused. And then, let me conclude with this. The Hadith Al-Qudsi, Hadith Al-Qudsi is the narration of God Himself. He says, لا تحتجب عني دعوة إلا دعوة آكل الحرام No prayers can be veiled from me. It means all prayers they reach me. And you know what Imam Ali says? Even when a Jew or a Christian prays, God would listen to them. Don't think that only the Muslims, only those who fast. إنه إنه بغري Imam Ali says إنه لا يستجاب لليهودي والنصراني God would answer the prayers of the Jews and the Christians. If it goes from a clean heart, God would respond to them because they are human beings. They are human beings. They are God's dependents, God's creatures. So God says, every prayer is going to reach me. The only prayer that does not reach me, the one who devours devour the haram. He eats something haram. Something does not belong to him. His money is haram. Is unlawful. The source of money that he gets, it does not belong to him. I'm not going to listen to him. Musa السلام, I conclude with this story. He took a group of many Israel children of Israel with him to the desert to pray. And God didn't answer. One day, two days, three days. Then Musa said, Ilahi. I'm leaving my house, my family, coming with those people. So please, please listen to them. The answer came from God. This is the answer. إِنَّكُمْ تَخْرُجُونَ إِلَيَّ بِأَبْدَانِ النَّجِسَةِ وَتَرْفَعُونَ أَكُفًّا قَدْ سَفِكْتُمْ بِهَا الدِّمَاءِ You come to me where there is, you are carrying filth with you and you are raising your hands where you slaughtered innocent people with these hands. I'm not going to listen. Even if you keep your hands five days, ten days off. Because these hands are sinners. There is a blood on these hands. You committed wrong, injustice, murder, theft with this hand. This hand does not have the power to raise your dua. It's not a qualified. This is any qualified hand. Go on and clean it first. Clean your hand. How do you clean it? Just you wash it, you wash it by soap. No, you wash it from sins. Go and settle your account with people. Go and apologize. Go and give ransom. Go and give fidya, dear, whatever. Go and make people happy. Go to them. When you fill your stomach food which does not belong to you, your prayers is not going to be answered. Not that Allah does not hear. His hearing is very good. But Allah says, I only hear and I only accept from those who are sincere and righteous. <inaudible> so inshallah, Allah will accept your prayers in this month, your du'as. Remember us. Remember those who are in the hospitals, some of them waiting for surgeries. And some of them are at homes. This is the month of prayer. So please, let me conclude with this story. Last, last hadith. Musa asked Allah, Allah, how do you want me to pray to you? He said, Ya Musa, ud'uni ala lisanin lam ta'sini bih. Pray to me with a tongue that you did not commit a sin with it. Musa said, sometimes I commit a sin with my this is a metaphor, of course. Musa does not commit a sin. God said to him, then, if you know you have committed a sin with your tongue, then, اِدْعُنِي عَلَى لِسَانِ غَيْرِكَ Ask other people to pray for you. If you want to pray to me and you know you have committed a sin, then ask a friend, a righteous friend. Tell him, please remember me. Please, iltimas dua I ask you to pray for me. So ask each other in Ramadan and outside Ramadan to pray for you, inshallah. Allahumma akhfar lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat wal muslimin wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat innaka mujibu al-da'awat. We recite this ayah, al-shifa' al-marda. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 يا الله من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية المريضة المنظورة اللهم ألبسها ثوب الصحة والعافية وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد